Sean Paul's interview yesterday where he said he thinks Syracuse men's basketball, you know, is a seven or eight conference team. Uh, that's where they're going to finish. People in the comments were upset. They're like, you have the best backcourt, but they're not going to finish top four. What is this? Uh, our boy Pat said, oh, we'll see. Something along those lines. Oh, good. This is Adrian Autry's first year as head coach. The roster makeup's a little different the than we've seen. schedule is loaded. It's not very often you see a Syracuse men's basketball team where, you know, your guards aren't, you know, one of your top two shooters. Yet it seems like everybody expects them to make the tournament. And I almost feel like their expectations are higher than Syracuse football, where Dino Babers is in his nth year and they just went 6-0 and to start. And, and I just think that's really weird. I've been trying to temper the, temper this a little bit because we don't know a damn thing about this team. The backcourt is good. That's what the, the – everybody else is a question mark. Everybody else I, I'll is say a question this. mark. I think – Even the depth. Tell me if you agree with this. I think – People are buying into the potential of SU basketball. I think potential is different than expectations. I don't know if the expectation is that they're going to make the tournament. What is I the think potential? The, the potential is there. What is the potential? I, I think the you know I think the potential. I mean, we were talking yesterday uh, with Sean. At, you know, I said, can they be a top six team? I think potential top six team in the ACC. I think that I think the potential is there for that to happen. I agree with you, but. Do you also see how the rather high portion yes. of people who people are excited, are, and I, I'm glad people they're excited. are saying the ceiling's high. How do you know that? There's a bunch of guys. Benny Williams has been erratic for his whole career, right? There's it's, two guys that were huge high school recruits that haven't really played college basketball, right? So that's the that's your rebuttal. To the potential. But you say, how do the people think there's a lot of potential there? What, how is there a high ceiling? Because of everything you just said, it's just the opposite, right? So you've got Judah and JJ. Nobody's going to argue with those guys. you got Benny Williams, who was a top 40 recruit. you got, as you mentioned, other highly touted guys that haven't played a lot of basketball. Um but they were highly touted for a reason. You know, a transfer from Kansas. Went to Kansas for a reason. A seven foot four center. Dude's got size. You can't teach size, right? If he's if he's skilled and if he improves, I, I think you could go position by position and say there is there is potential there. There is a high ceiling. Like, would you not agree that there is a high ceiling with a seven foot four center with a couple years of eligibility left? There is a high ceiling for that particular player. Yeah, but I don't and know. I think you could go position by position and say I, the same thing. I agree with the high ceiling thing, but to expect it to gel into well, this great team next year, but that's is why kind of that's why they're different, insane. right? I think high ceiling and potential is different than expect and expectations. Yeah. Right, so I think that there is excitement because there's a new head coach. It's a fresh start, less zone, man to man. It's a, a different kind of team. Either. It's ten, I mean, I'm yeah. getting sick of. That. I don't mean to go on a. I had to fire out a tweet last night because yesterday was like the fifth time we've gotten a report this off season. Uh, hey guys, guys, psst, you listening? Syracuse, Autry, they might play man. We know. Coach it was, it was, it was did Goodman. It last year a little bit too. Jeff yeah. Goodman, yes. And I, I'm not calling out Goodman because I've seen that same story printed right. five times this offseason. I mean, but, but <laughs> here, here's the thing. I, I know we've heard Jim Beham in the past. I, I do believe that they're playing a majority of man. I mean, I it, Adrian Autry has made it a point to say, he he's said it to us yeah. uh, multiple times. I, they and the assistants have said the same thing. They, they've made it a point to say that yeah. ah, they're playing man. Oh, I agree. Um, I just think it's funny yeah, that they, we've gotten this story nationally five times throughout the summer. Like, yes, we've established they're going to play man. Right. What else is going Colgate on? Dumps a hundred on you again. That might change pretty. Quick. <laughs> but again, you talk about you know what the the expectations versus the potential. I think people are excited. New head coach, new system, new defense, a lot of new players, talented players. That again, it, maybe it's their second chance. I mean, like a, a JJ Starling. Uber talented, maybe wasn't in the right fit there. Obviously lost his head coach. He comes here and and let's see what these guys can do together. See, I don't I have think a you question at, about JJ you or Judah. Chris it's, Bell. I mean, we know yeah, he Sean can, didn't mention him yesterday. I felt bad. I'm like, Sean, you got to learn about Chris Bell, man. We, we know he can shoot lights out, but he didn't last year and he didn't rebound. And you know, was that being a freshman and go through growing pains? Was it did he lose his confidence? You know, everybody assumed he was going to transfer. He didn't. Everybody assumed Benny was going to transfer. He didn't. They stuck it out. I, I think that there are reasons, again, guy by guy. Justin Taylor, we saw glimpses. You know, look at that Bryant game when he went off for whatever it was, 24 points. You, like, 
He's going to be better. Everybody gets better in the offseason. I'm excited to see what it looks like. Do I think they're going to make the NCAA tournament? I don't know that. You I don't think that know. There, I think that there is a, I think there is a, a good so, a good possibility, strong possibility that they do CBW make the tournament. CBW is asking a question, better or worse than if they ran it back one more year? And I don't know the answer. I don't know. I would probably say you would hope if they had run it back with three players coming back, they would be better to start. Like, I don't think they would go into Maui as big of dogs as they are with this year's team, right? That's actually a great question from CBW. Um, yeah. Because you're talking... Because I don't think the hype would be as big. You're talking fifth-year Joe Girard. You're talking fifth-year Jesse. You know, you're talking okay. Judah. Yeah. Um, and so, I guess, I guess with that and mean... you're probably talking one... Of the two transfers. That's really fun. Which That's team would ask. win Can in you... like a hypothetical video game matchup of like 22-23 versus 23-24? Yeah. Can you get one of the trans? Like, can you get a transfer? I'm guessing Chance Westry probably. Can. I don't know. that. I think JJ. It sounds like JJ was coming here either way. Okay, so we'll say JJ. Yeah. So. Like whether Joe was here or not, it sounds like JJ was coming. Like he had his mind made up. Um. I know you're talking about potential and you don't know. This is kind of where I'm going with this. I'm going to use the words let down because that sets an expectation previously that's not being met. Do you think the fan base will be more let down if Syracuse football doesn't make a bowl game this year if they don't make the NCAA tournament? Bowl game. You think so? They should. If you're a logical person, not making a bowl game this year is I way know, more disappointing. But I'm getting the perception that people will be just let down if the men's basketball team doesn't make the tournament. Here's the thing. Um, If the football team doesn't, I think there's going to be a faction of the fan base that isn't surprised and And like, oh, you know, same old, same old. Exactly. Whereas basketball, again, with the excitement and the, you know, the off season, they've won the off season, you know, quote unquote, we joke about that. Um, In terms of the emotions, like you say, being let down again, I think I'm, I'm a, I'm careful. I don't want to say that they didn't live up to expectations because I don't think it's fair to say that this team is expected to make the NCAA tournament. But in terms of the emotions of it and being let down, I think you may have a, a point there, Jordan. I, I would. It's a bigger basketball town. That's yeah, why. right. But if you're a logical human, this football team should be in a bowl game next right. year. So no if the question, question is, what is a bigger disappointment? No bowl game or no NCAA tournament. The bigger disappointment is no bowl game. I agree. But if you're talking about the emotion of how will fans feel, I just, and that speaks to Paulie's point about it's a basketball town. And I think after 20 years of mediocrity with the football program, opposed to a couple of years of mediocrity with basketball, I think the, the emotion would, you, you know, would side with the basketball team because the, the, uh, you know, there's an apathetic portion of the football fan base. They're like, ah, we've seen this. Here we go again, five and seven, like, you know, whatever. Um, Whereas basketball, I think there's an excitement that, all right, you know, all these changes, now it's time to get back into the national spotlight. That's what I think. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just thought it was interesting because it's comparable whole, expectations. With for- all this, uh, like, Jeez. the way I look at it right now, I'm looking at a big picture. The Syracuse football program, if the ACC is going to implode in, like, seven years, like Steve said, let's go on a little run. Yeah, that's the most important thing, Dino. Let's go. Make yourself more attractive. Yeah, you know, let's go on a run. Let's shock the world this year. Let's finish top four in the ACC in football. Yeah, no divisions this year, so it's uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. But yeah, this is an opportunity. It's a it's a critical time. I think we've been saying that for a couple of years now, knowing that the cows landscape was changing. That it's a critical time. That you want football to get good now. Like you you can't really wait. All right, so CBW is saying with what's getting lost in all of Paulie's unknowns is last year's team was nothing but average. Right. So everybody's assuming that everybody's going to stay average. Is So all of a sudden, Jude is going to make a miraculous jump this year and be a superstar. And Benny's going to do it this year. But it wouldn't happen if Joe Girard and Jesse were on the team still? Give me a break. I mean, yeah, there's an argument to be made that it would be easier with the same roster around you. Yeah, I think, but that like doesn't I said, take into account these guys might make their teammates better. As yeah, opposed to they they may be better. They may be the same. They may be worse. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, 
I think it's I do think it's a legitimate debate and a legitimate question because if you if you're talking about running it back, you'd have an NBA point guard, a pro caliber center, whatever that means with Jesse. He's probably yeah. not an NBA center, yeah. but he's a he's a pro. Yeah. Uh you know, a fifth year shooting guard in Joe Girard that again, uh, you know, Clemson who's picked to finish, you know, top four in the conference, he's probably gonna start there. Um you got Benny in year three. Yeah. The Al saying they already hit their ceiling. No, they didn't. Be- you guys think what? Yeah, Benny's not going to get better if, if the team stays the same. Bell's not going to get better if the team stays the same. That that's a dumb take. I mean, uh, maybe so, I'm stupid. If like if Benny wasn't going to get better, I don't think he's the, only going to get better. I don't if think the program they, they would don't be run it back. putting this much effort into it and making sure he has minutes. They promote him on the social media accounts. I, like they're I, expecting I, Benny. I, to I will leave. say this: I think that team would have been better early. I don't know at the end of the season if it will be better. We'll see. That makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. Like I would rather roll into that Maui tournament with two fifth-year guys and Judah. And, yeah, but yeah. So we'll see. I do think it's it's an exciting. You don't think Joe Girard has hit team. his ceiling? Even if he, even if he did, hit, if Joe Girard hit his ceiling and Jesse hit his ceiling, you're still bringing back a poop ton of points and then you hope the younger kids get better it's uh why i i hate this <laughs> bell and them won't get better unless those two are gone is that basically what i'm hearing i don't can we say jesse hit his ceiling i don't know i mean i think we're gonna you find out this season yeah. right i mean if he hit his ceiling, then there's a lot of meat on the bone in terms of back to the basket offensive game. Yeah. You can't tell me if he doesn't spend all summer working on that that he won't get better. Yeah, but I I do agree with the you know the the Joe. I mean, yeah, he, he probably did hit his Joe, ceiling. Joe hit his ceiling. I don't a, know about Jesse. Though. But even if he did hit his ceiling, this is where I get mad at people. He he scores 16 points a game. Yeah. I don't want to spend this time like too you much. You did we're, this. We're already, I, I, look, man, I didn't. I didn't do the hypothetical last year's this year's team. I'm really excited to see how Clemson fans like react to the Joe Girard experience. Like, I'm going to be keeping an eye on Clemson Twitter because I want to see if it's just Syracuse or if everybody just dislikes I'm that guy on the team. Wondering how SU fans look at the the Clemson uh, experience. Uh, we'll take a time out here. We'll get to your phone calls. We want to know what you have to think about or what you have to say about this. What do you think about this? 315-437-7644. What would be a bigger disappointment? No bowl game, no NCAA tournament. We'll take a time out here. We're back after this on ESPN Radio.